organic compounds. We talked about inorganic nomenclature. Um, we're just going to touch a little bit on organic nomenclature. The early chemists divided uh, chemicals into two groups, organic and inorganic. And the things, the compounds that came from living organisms were called organic, and those from non-living things from the environment were called inorganic. Um, so they found that organic compounds uh, were a lot easier to decompose, to take apart, than the inorganic ones. And they were able to synthesize inorganic compounds in the lab, but not organic compounds. Turns out biological living organisms are good at making these chemicals, and people in the lab um, is a lot harder. This is a different use of the word organic than you'll see like at the grocery store. Organic apples. Well, duh, all apples are organic, says the chemist. They're living organisms. They're composed of organic chemicals. Your organic apples have chemicals in them because everything's made up of chemicals. You can't have an apple that doesn't have chemicals in it. Oh, you mean it doesn't have pesticides and herbicides sprayed on it. Okay, well, that's different. But organic chemicals are, are those that are composed primarily of carbon and hydrogen. So things that are composed primarily of carbon and hydrogen and um, other common elements that we see um, are oxygen especially and then to a lesser extent things like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. You can have other elements in there but organic compounds are primarily carbon and hydrogen. This is um, a structural formula of CH4 which is methane and that's the space filling model. Um, organic compounds are named differently because the patterns for um, ionic compounds and for molecular compounds and for acids don't work here. And so they developed an, a different system of nomenclature. Um, when carbons bond with each other and with other elements, it's almost exclusively covalent bonds. They don't form ions. That's why we never talked about, well, what kind of an ion does carbon form? It doesn't form ions. It can form single, double, and triple bonds with other carbon atoms. And it always forms four bonds. Um, carbon is, is really unique because it frequently bonds to itself. And so it'll make these long chains or these large rings and complicated structures where the carbon is bonded to other carbon atoms. Here's some examples. Doesn't that guy look kind of crazy? These are structural formulas that help us to see how the atoms are connected to each other. So this is propane. The chemical formula is C3H8. But if you didn't understand how atoms bond, there's a lot of different combinations you could come up with for how those would be put together. But this is how it's put together. Isobutane, C4H10, cyclohexane. So in cyclohexane, the carbons actually form a ring, and then the hydrogens are hanging on. It's almost like a necklace with little charms or a bracelet with charms on it. You can have double bonds. This is ethene, uh, where you've got a double bond between these two carbons. Ethine has a triple bond. And you can have other elements in there, too, such as the oxygen. So here we have carbon with a single bond to another carbon atom a double bond to one oxygen, and a single bond to another oxygen. So these are just examples of what uh, small organic molecules look like. There's a whole other class for organic chemistry, two whole semesters. Well, um, the author likes flowcharts, and flowcharts can be helpful. So if we take all compounds, we can divide them into inorganic compounds, and this would be the starting point for that nomenclature flowchart that we had, breaking down into further categories. So there's inorganic, and then there's organic. And we can break organic into two large categories, hydrocarbons <coughs> and functionalized hydrocarbons. So plain and fancy, basically. Hydrocarbons, as the name suggests, contain hydrogen and carbon only. Bless you. 
And these um, are very common in fuels, oil, gasoline, liquid propane, natural gas. These all contain hydrocarbons. They burn really nicely. They give off a lot of energy. Um, and they burn cleanly. They, they just give off carbon dioxide and water. So you do need to have a basic understanding of how we name these things. If the hydrocarbon has only single bonds, it's called an alkane. So we're changing the ending here. Alkane, all single bonds. If you have one double bond or more, it's an alkene. If you have a triple bond, it's an alkyne. And so then you get into all sorts of chemistry puns, like it takes all kinds. It takes all kinds. So the base name um, is determined by the number of carbon atoms in the chain. And then the suffix is determined by presence of multiple bonds. So if it's all single bonds, the suffix is ane. If there's a double bond, it's ene. If there's a triple bond, it's ine. So base name depends on number of carbon atoms. Ignore the first four, pent, hex, hept, oct, known, dec. Those should look familiar. Those are similar to the prefixes we used for the molecular compounds, right? The first four are different. I'm sorry about that. It's um, history, really. So how do you remember that Meth is 1, F is 2, prop is 3, and bute is 4. This is how I remember it. Mom eats pickled bananas. Could you even pickle a banana? I don't know. Mom must be pregnant. Um, pickled bananas. Just to get the order, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl. So M. Meth is one, et cetera. And then the suffix, ane, ene, or ine. And so methane has one carbon and just all single bonds. So that's methane. Ethane has two carbons. And so the carbons will be bonded to each other and then the carbons are always going to form four bonds. And so it's just going to get filled in with hydrogens around the edges. Um, here's a nice little table showing you some of these guys. So here's methane has one carbon. Propane has three carbons. Uh, butane, mom eats pickled bananas. Mom eats pickled bananas, four, right? So that's C4. Um, pentane is five. Ethene, mom eats, that's two carbons. The ene tells us there's a double bond. So there's that double bond. Ethine tells us there's a triple bond. And of course, it gets a lot more complicated than this. But this is just sort of a little introduction. And just for your general interest, this are, these are common uses of, of these different substances. So what are functionalized hydrocarbons? Um, a functional group is something other than our normal carbon-hydrogen bonds in that organic compound, and it adds a different chemical function to the compound. So that derives from the functionality or chemical character that the, a particular group gives. <coughs> and we, we can even call a carbon-carbon double or triple bond a functional group because the presence of that double bond or triple bond changes how those uh, compounds react. And so we can have groups of organic families that have the same functional group, and, and those are called fam family I, that didn't come out right, did it? Group of organic compounds. I'll just read it. A group of organic compounds with the same functional group forms a family. That was better. So here's an example of two compounds that are in the alcohol family. 
So this OH functional group causes the chemical character of methane to be different. We've taken off a hydrogen and we've substituted this OH functional group. It's called a hydroxyl group. So this then is methanol and this is isopropanol, also known as isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol is rubbing alcohol. Well, you can use it to sterilize things. And they used to give people alcohol baths when they had fevers. It's not a good idea. Um, methanol is also called wood alcohol. You definitely don't want to be drinking that because that will kill you. Um, it doesn't taste good either. Um, and isopropanol is not going to be good for you. The, the alcohol that people drink is ethanol. So if methanol has one carbon, how many carbons does ethanol have? Two. So ethanol is CH3CH2OH. So the name is based on the number of carbons. We're switching up the ending. Um, now we're switching up the ending uh, to show that it's an alcohol. Ethanol, that's the alcohol that, that you can drink. It is also technically toxic because if you drink too much of it, it'll kill you. But so will water. So you know, it's very relative. These are different um, functional groups. Um, where's the best place to look? These are the name endings. We're not going to get into naming those. Um, but here's OH and here's the oxygen in the middle. This is such a huge topic that it's just hard to even know how far to go in. Um, so this is a question, and the reason I'm covering this really at all is because you could see a question like this on the final exam. It's, um, and because it'll be on the final, I'll probably ask a question or two on exam two about this stuff, but we're not going to go crazy. So what do you need to know? Well, no name. Known is nine, right? And ain is the suffix for hydrocarbons. So this is just hydrogens and carbons, nothing else. And there's nine. Now, there's different arrangements, but we're going to stick to the straight chain. So you just put all the carbons in a chain, and then you fill in hydrogens around. So drawing the structural formula for nonane, which sounds a lot like no name, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Organic chemistry is is interesting and very different than general chemistry. There's, there's very little math. The main math is counting, like I just did. You've got to count nine carbons. You draw nine Cs. Each carbon has to have four bonds. No name. The ane ending to, says they're all single bonds. So we put the carbons in a chain. And then we fill in with hydrogens so that all the carbons have four bonds. And the reason that we don't always draw these structural formulas is because drawing all these hydrogens gets a little tedious after a while. It's a lot of hydrogens. It's 2 times 9 plus 2. So that's no name. So if I asked you, draw the structural formula for butane. Or if I gave you a formula, like if I gave you this, what do you suppose the name for that is? How many carbons? Three. Mom eats pickled. So prop. And the suffix becomes what? Ene, because it has a double bond. So that would be propene. OK, so that's about as far as that's going to go. I think this is helpful to look at. 
but I don't expect you to memorize the functional groups. But if you had a table handy, you should be able to identify which family this compound belongs to. So look at it and see, well, what is different than just carbon-hydrogen single bonds? Well, it's this carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So let's go back to the table and see if we can find something that looks like that. So here's carbon double bonded to an oxygen, but here the carbon has a hydrogen on it. R just generically stands for a hydrocarbon. Um, might be easier to look at the examples. So here the carbon has that oxygen, but it's bonded to hydrogen. Here that carbon is in the middle of this chain, and it's double bonded to the oxygen. And so that's what we're seeing here, is that we've got a carbon that's in the middle of the chain, not at the end, and double bonded. And so that is a ketone. So that's a ketone. You do not need to memorize the functional groups. You do need to know those prefixes. You should know methane, ethane, propane, butane, and the rest of those. You should know the ane, ene, and ine suffixes and what they mean.